Jordan. Welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're with the sisters, the people behind the Beverly Hills lingerie store. Thanks for joining. People Thank who you. don't know, what do you do? What's the company do? Thanks for having us. Thank so you happy so to much be for here chatting us. with you. So we started Beverly Hills lingerie in 2018 with the mission to fill the gap in streetwear lingerie. Streetwear lingerie. Exactly. So we are lingerie for a night in or a night out. So we like to design our pieces to be dual use. So we like to style our pieces as ready to wear. And then we also do carry like your standard classic bedroom sets as well. Okay. So many questions here. So what, what did <laughs> you see in the, the market? Well, why this company? What of all the things did you guys come from a fashion line? What did you guys no, study in school? No. Good question. No, we well, have a lot of answers to this. Yeah, Take it long away, backgrounds. Um, I went to USC pre-med, and at the time, there were girls trying to style old pieces of lingerie out with a leather jacket, with jeans. Right, right And it wasn't right. quite working. There wasn't quite the market for it six or seven years ago. And my sister just graduated. We both have our majors in communications and minors in entrepreneurship. We were trying to dream something up, and she also saw the gap. Yeah, so we just like basically landed in the women's field. We always wanted to be in an industry that we could feel close to and understand like our own target demographic. So it was perfect for us to go into something that was fun, feminine. We still keep it very classy, I would say. Like, you know, we come from conservative backgrounds, so we do have our own touch of elegance to the laundry for sure. And it made sense at the time, and it still does, because the market of streetwear lingerie and outerwear lingerie and ready-to-wear lingerie has grown so much. That's right, yeah. So it's, a, it's been a really fun industry and a fun ride. All right, so you said a couple things. So you started pre-med. I did. And there are some did. cultural norms here, yeah. right? And so you, you went from like making mom and dad super proud. Right. Yes. To, to making them prouder. To making women proud. <laughs> but what was it like? What was sort of taking that big risk at the beginning, telling yeah. your parents, your sisters, you're both doing it mm -hmm. in, a, in sort of a conservative culture? What was that? Very good for question. Both of very you? good question. We had the full support of our parents. It was my very conservative dad's idea, really, to go into business together and to have something of our own oh. and to work on something. Of our own whether it was it was you know a passion or a hobby or whatever it was the full support of him who who drove us to where we are now wow yeah and is your dad an entrepreneur create. or what what is like no is he, used to risk -taking? he just left corporate tax after 35 years yeah. corporate tax corporate yeah. tax and yeah. he's an evolved man yeah yes all right wow yes. okay so you guys decide to start this company what's your first step like what do you First do? Step. What so much you know, market products. research? So much market research, but really your brand voice. So there's so we are obviously your brand voice. Okay, your brand voice. We're obviously bombarded by so many brands every day. How do you stand out? Exactly. Yeah. How do you stand out? How do you find your niche? How do you find your driving point? You know what makes you so special mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. such an oversaturated world, and especially the internet right now is even more oversaturated than it was 10 years ago yeah. or even five years ago. We were searching for that that brand voice, what spoke to us, what we wanted to represent for a woman, what kind of feeling we wanted to sell. And I always say that as much as we're selling a product, we're also kind of selling a service. I think lingerie is a feeling and we're selling the feeling of confidence and empowerment. And it's it, when you put it on, it's, it's kind of like you're buying a feeling. So we were looking for that and we, we just sat on the computer for a year and a half doing so much market research, not just the computer, offline sure, of sure, course, sure. asking so many of our peers, family, friends, whoever started businesses for some advice. We went to a few trade shows, some in Vegas. Um, we traveled to other parts of of the country just learning about the industry. We went through so many business models. We did. One time we were like, we're going to be subscription based, you know, lingerie. Sure. Everyone needs that once yeah. we get their door. Yeah. No, they don't. And then we <laughs> wanted to be a retailer. We're like, idea, let's though. pick our favorite brands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we're like, let's right. pick our favorite brands and create the coolest little lingerie just marketplace. Like a yeah. And then we were like, wait, we are so picky with designs and what we're going to sell. We just have to just design and create our own collection. For people listening that are thinking like, okay, so you guys are basically became the experts in some extent in lingerie what are some of the things that no one would know like what are the like three or four things that you were like that you learned about the industry I would say that, that it, shocked you maybe that shocked us I would say it is not a season it's not like a season based wear like oh, this so people is think it's like a Valentine's yes, Day but it's not it's an all ah, year round it's okay. fun it's for yourself women buy so much more lingerie than they realize and they're gifted so much la more lingerie than they realize and yeah. they love lingerie so much more so than they the, realize. $40 billion dollar in annual industry. Yeah. All right, so it's large. Okay. It's, and so, oh, who's, yeah. so you're saying the buyer is twofold. It's 
the the person wearing it mostly female yeah and then or i would say maybe and all then there's female gifting. yes and then, and then there's, there's like gifting. the boyfriends husbands exactly. totally exactly yeah girlfriends we've maybe. been featured in a lot of like we know what to get your girlfriend for valentine's day gift guys we've been featured in like 50 gifts you must you know give your girlfriend for valentine's day that aren't roses so you say that and my brain goes can a man actually buy lingerie for women oh, or we is it like a it gift card so many male names yes, all right so a male do. walks into in the store find, yeah. i walk into we the store do i show you a picture i'm like this is her like, what no, details do I need no. to know? It, again, Sizing. I feel like it's back to the feeling. Whatever you're drawn to. You open yeah. our website and you're like, wow, I love that corset. You check the sizing. We have a lot of photos on the website and a lot of photos on Instagram. So you can kind of see how to style it. You know, you're not buying something like a shot in the dark. There's just like so much info around it. Like the writing, the seams, the size guide, like everything is just so clear. So whatever speaks to you, you check out. And we have great customer service. So there's a live <laughs> chat on the website. People guys, use it all the time. Who's and we if, have a team. And but, we have yeah. a team. It filters in and out. Yeah. But if it's something that's like flagged to our attention, of course, we'll be responding yeah. and chatting right away. Because it really is so important for the founder to be tied as closely to the brand and the brand story as possible. And every time I feel like I know who the founders are or I know the founder or the founder is just passionate about their brand, it makes me want to shop from them so totally. much more. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's also good for feedback. Like you're also oh, collecting yeah. information in of real time. Of course. Yeah. To help and you guys we do move. that. Speaking of collecting feedback, we have thrown so many events probably yeah. like 100 plus in our in our brand's lifetime what's an event like tell me so we've done so many we've done event collaborations we've done pop-up shops we've done um like holiday gift shops mm -hmm. we've popped up at retail boutiques we've done launch parties we've done like everything under the sun because and most of them involve like our items on a rack yes. speaking of feedback so we yeah. get that real time we get that real time and we, we does this what come in people, white what yeah. size is this can i try this on you know, like just so many different questions. So every day, is just, every day at an event is basically a focus group because you're just <laughs> listening in on people totally. and you're no, there to so give, important. you're only as good as your customers. So you're there to give the people what they gems. want. Yesterday we were talking, to, I was mentioning Make Beauty, the founder. Mm -hmm. And so I, when, I, when it comes to her product, she was telling me that she gives her product to makeup artists. And it hit me because I was like, oh, it's interesting because it's like the people using the most makeup or the yeah. people that are sort of the professionals in that world are the makeup artists. Yeah, totally. And also it's like their reputation when they use makeup, right? So it's like this person's hitting the runway or the exactly. red carpet, the Oscars, whatever it is. It's the social proof. Yeah. And so that's her That's her like uh, little in feedback loop base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With you guys, is there a certain group of people that are like the ones that sort of taste make in the yeah. lingerie world? Yeah, yes. we. I'd say we work heavily with stylists. We have pulls and requests at least once a week, and then we also are sending out to stylists all the time, and we get feedback directly from them saying, you know, either their client, it didn't fit their client right, or it didn't work with their, their personal style. Or, or they're gonna keep it for the next shoot. Yeah. And it's awesome because so many of our pieces, I mean, they fit in a stylist kit so easily. It could be just yeah. like a gorgeous black corset, and you just fold it up and throw it in your kit, and so many stylists just surprise us with the coolest content, and mm -hmm. just message us and email us, by the way, just threw this on so-and-so, and we're just like, our jaws drop with the content because it's just styled in a way. I mean, my sister and I definitely do push the barriers with how we like to style our pieces. We like to do fun and different stuff, especially because... Like what? Give people a window. Well, like we've even styled like an underbust corset over a blazer instead of under a blazer. And I feel like not a lot of people would do that, but... Or we try this like look. ruffle top over there as like a waist belt or as yes. like a necktie. Our model here is joining us. Our model us. here today. For people listening, there's Thanks a model in the room. Several ways to clearly style that corset. She's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Whether it's on you or as decoration. <laughs> yes, Imagine exactly. if we had a real model in here. Yeah. I was just like standing. Oh, that'd be awkward. Uh, yeah. And funny. When did you guys realize you were onto something? Like at what point does it sort of evolve from the idea, the risk to like, okay, I think we have I'd a company. Say, I'd say we're very lucky in this sense, but the outpour of support and love from our, our community here in LA, as soon as we launched really, I'd say after a month, we had family friends offering us spaces to do pop-ups, inviting us to events, inviting us to pop-up at events and yes. be involved in things. And Invite us to it, was, it was really like an outpour of support, which we're so lucky to have around us. Yeah. Lots of loyal friends and family. And, that's rare, by the way. And we felt we were onto something because rare. it was genuine and it felt real and, we, and it motivated us to keep going and it made us want to keep doing it. And in under a year, we were approached by, you know, Fred Siegel, Planet Blue, by big name stores that we grew up shopping from. And they're like, they were like, they want our product, of course. And we're, we were just a few months old. Yeah. And at that, you know, I think the first year or two for a brand... Um, so important. Yeah, it's so important. Set your but, foundation. But maybe you don't get so that yet. Important. Maybe you don't get that you're onto something quite yet in that just in that time. And 
we're, we're lucky to have felt that and to have just so much motivation to keep going and so much excitement Definitely. and passion. And we loved working together. So there was always that aspect of, of passion and excitement. Yes. I was going to say working together. I mean, it has like a million mm -hmm. pros, of course, but we bring such different tastes and things to the table. Our brand vision and our morals and our values, everything is aligned. We work with the same intentions. We work with the same like love and care for our business, but we bring so many different views and when you mix them all together and we have each other to bounce off of it really does create it's something a perfect really blend. really cool yeah, yeah. our it's brand a is a perfect blend. blend of each of us yeah it's adorable oh, it's like your parents must be so happy for Thanks. you they're like oh they're, they're, they still like we're each lucky. other we're yeah lucky. no we're lucky we we're lucky. have the support yeah you exactly. guys were raised right i guess that's Thank amazing you. this is a good story it's Thanks. a good story of your own little <laughs> dynamic it's yeah. amazing all right so you felt like you were onto something. Mm -hmm. And then what's the hard part of the business? Is it just reinventing products? Is it like, what is the, what is the thing that makes everything move? Obviously it's everything, right? It's, you have to do yeah, like all everything. the little it's things right. a whole lot right. of elements, but again, there's no formula. So I don't want to be like, there are these elements and you know, ingredients for a recipe, yeah, there's but, no there, but there's also no recipe that anyone can follow. There's no yeah. rule book or guidebook. Because being in fashion can be tough in general, I was gonna right? Say, it's being like, in, it can be fickle. It's pretty saturated too. Is, and it's is, saturated, there's a lot of noise, yeah. There's a lot of noise. There are a lot of brands. There's a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in California. I mean, I think everybody goes into like sustainability for some, right. you know, point. And then also a lot of brands that start with just carrying a few pieces, just carry everything now. So you're just bombarded by so many choices. So you really do need to make your point as a brand, you know what I mean? And really Clarity. gather mm -hmm. your customers and keep them. I think like customer loyalty is huge. So every time we acquire a customer, we want to make sure we can keep them for a lifetime. Yeah, that's smart. So yeah, that's really, really important because you are, we're just bombarded with so many different things and we're always just wanting to try different things and mm -hmm. shop from different brands. And there's just always a new retailer and everybody's running a sale. As and then there's always just so many trends. <laughs> like even for us shopping, I feel confused yeah. all the time. I'm like, wait, is that top still cool or was that like from two months ago? I'm not sure what to buy. So there's just so many different trends and styles yeah. and you really do have to stay at the forefront you do but i but in terms of your question i think that it's it's with all of that with the confusion with the saturation and just the overwhelming busyness of the internet and finding brands the problem is and that's not just for us but every brand is really reach it's like discovery it's like i know so many customers are out there for us yeah. in america how but do how do we how do we them? reach them how does any brand reach everyone yeah do you guys do paid ads? Like yeah, we digital? do a lot yeah. of digital yes, ads. That's yeah. smart. That works a lot. Definitely. It works if your creatives are amazing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It works if it's not Valentine's Day and yes. Matt doesn't hate you. Exactly. <laughs> Give me the seasonality on the business. And so obviously you definitely see a spike. Totally. Valentine's no, day. of course. Definitely. But then Valentine's, Valentine's Day and, and Hall Valentine's Halloween, Day. Halloween because okay. lingerie is, is popular during Halloween. Yes. Yeah. I would okay. say February, Those are the spikes. October, yeah. and then honestly November and December for sure too. Those that are for everyone. That's in any industry. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And when it comes to funding, did you guys self-fund it? How did you, did we you did. raise capital? Yeah. Right, we're bootstrapped. You're bootstrapped. Yeah. Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Do you want to? Like, do you want to go on Shark Tank? At this Tank? point, it, wanna... I mean, it would be fun. It would be cool. I don't think that we're we're in the position to give away equity or to kind of like diffuse the brand that way. If we can continue what we're doing and keep going, if we had like a clear plan and you know everything we need the funds for, quite possibly. But right now, we're just so happy with what we're doing, and we know it's like our baby forever. Wherever it's going, like we're gonna go with it. So I don't know if we're gonna dilute it that way. Where do you want to take it? Like when you think about just global, global TCC retailers. Just be like the first lingerie brand that comes up in people's minds. Just want to see it everywhere. And I was going to say one of the reasons we named it Beverly Hills Lingerie yes, was right. was for that global reach. So we really wanted to be special around the globe. I think the name Beverly Hills and also just like any city is so appealing when you're in another totally. city. So it has like such it factor to it. So yeah. our end goal is definitely to be across the globe, be that like very, you know, special touch of luxury. Can you trademark it? Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. You did. We yeah. did. We trade. It is tough with the city name, but it, but it's like no, just having smart. having a city name attached to, to, to the brand name. It's you know, all LVMH does that. Every oh, every designer, no you have to yeah. have like some sort of city name attached. And I'm on the board of our tennis club, but it's called the Los Angeles Tennis Club, mm -hmm. and so and they own the trademark to that. Right. Nice. And so then I saw a shirt at Target. Like someone made a shirt. Mm -hmm. And they're selling it at Target. It said Los Angeles Tennis Club. Mm. And you're just like, see, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then. So when our lawyer emailed them and then they like Target like totally apologized and oh. discontinued the shirt. And I was like, oh. this is oh, wow. I was like, this is crazy. So then I was like, 
let's partner with a Wilson or some Prince or, you know, something. Because they want to use some that. Some tennis brand. They need that. Yeah. Right? License yeah. this out. Create mm-hmm. a revenue share for the club. And then while we do that, we just have them, like, if, let's let's say the members of the club didn't want this thing to be, like, all around. Mm-hmm. Right. We could just do it in Asia. Like, just launch in the Asian totally. markets. Yeah. To Which your point. Great. Who yeah. love the name. Who right? love the name. Exactly. And it's such a great name anyway. And, you and know then you're bringing all this revenue to the club. Yeah, it's yeah. great. So did you do that? I'm working on it. Awesome. These Keep things take time. It takes time to like, It does know, take time, of course. To, to like get the it board. Right. It's, the, it's, it's mm-hmm. just the members of this club. It's like yes. these things are slow. They're like, what do you mean we're going to sell our name? You know? <laughs> no, it's and fine. It's like, slow and steady. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let people process it's like, it's like being it. a developer. You'll lease the name. You can yeah. rent, rent We could rent it. It could be a rev share. It could also be like... Royalty. You know, you can make an agreement where you're not like you're not you wouldn't be allowed to use it on lingerie. Just an example. Right. Totally. Because right? the members would be like, what kind of clothing yeah. is it going to be? You know, yeah. You With can a have good some lawyer, tea. you can totally do all these. All these yeah. things. Yeah. Beverly Hills lingerie. I'm it's trying to think. Like, would you see it it's on a jacket? Yeah. It's great for SEO. And you guys want to do this for how long? Like when you think about I think this is a forever thing. Definitely. I'm so in love with it. I mean, of course, that's not to say that we we won't continue like adding on to our careers and doing other things in addition. But I just think wherever it goes, it's it's always like going to be our, our baby and passion. And we love it so much and put so much into it. We really have so much heart in this brand because it speaks so closely to ourselves. So it's, it's that. yeah, mm-hmm. it really is. It's not like a company that we started hoping to just, you know, make money and change the world and just fill a gap in the, in the market. We really do find a need for our brand. So we are so happy to be doing what we're doing mm-hmm. and I don't I don't really see a day that I'm like you know what I'll give that to someone else and we had our good ride like I really want to take it as far as we can let me ask you this and so you started the company you're both in college at the time or you're young right you're younger than you are and so as I get older I'm like oh like new products emerge or mm-hmm. like your tastes change you guys are women maybe you might or be married maybe you might have kids one day mm-hmm. how do you see like do you see the evolution of of sort of lingerie. Totally. Like how do you see that totally. as you guys are just experiencing it, you know, just by living your lives? Yeah, and we're flexible. We're multiple with the brand. We want to evolve with the times and the customers Definitely. and ourselves. I know my sister wants to go into gowns and really ready to yeah. wear and things. So we're, we're like ready for that. gorgeous corset yeah. gowns. We're ready to just roll with the times. And we really do listen to our customers and we really do listen to women. And we follow trends and we follow our gut. We randomly get these like wild thoughts someday of being like, wait, should we add a trim to this design? Because I think it'll be so cool. And it's- Or candles you won't even, even. Yeah. Something yeah, like- Yeah, do you guys as, sell these candles? Yes, we like sell crazy. these candles. So for sure, I mean, that's really sense. well thought. Yeah, they set the mood. It's an ancillary, but it sets the mood. It yeah, sets yeah. exactly. It, it's part it's of really it. It's really smart. Exactly, yeah. yeah. When it comes to just you guys how many products are you guys making uh like on a maybe a quarterly basis how no, do you do it no it's more like annual annual basis yeah how and we don't have like products? seasonal collections it's just right. maybe like 10 or, or so every okay. twice a year and then so price point how long did you guys figure like the price point discussion always a real thing so mm-hmm. the price and it's point, changed it has it's changed good. that's the- price point discussion we didn't want to start too expensive without having good social proof we definitely wanted to get our brand out there as much as we could gift it gift it it out to editors get into the hands of people so we needed to keep our cog low for sure so we started off and we still do maintain pretty reasonable pricing our price does really match our quality and our product because our made in LA pieces are actually really expensive they're made here they're made here yes like these are the ones yes we have a yeah, we have a Made in LA collection, a lot of our stuff. Made in LA, great quality, amazing boning, great turnaround. Very easy for us because, you know, we can make the products so quickly and get them in the hands of, you know, retailers. And, and it's sustainable. And everything. And it's sustainable, which is great. And, uh, you know, ethically made. Like, how much is it? Tell people how much it is. Yeah, no, this, the, the this ruffle top costs us upwards of, like, $45 to create. Okay. Yeah. To, to make to it? To make. create. Oh, wow. We sell it for 110 Yeah. That's pretty reasonable. Very it's a reasonable, reasonable thing, but it's, that's not, that's, that's like, the that's the worst margin anyone's probably ever had. Yeah, that's not a good margin, especially. To, so that's like, that should be a wholesale margin. Yeah. yeah. You know, like wholesale. the 45 to 110 should be like a wholesale price. But right now, it's, here we are. Is, We've entered the yeah. discussion. Like, here All we right. are. Yeah. For us right now, it's just kind of like volume. You know what I mean? We'd rather totally make as many sales as possible and acquire as many customers as possible. And then in turn, I think as time goes on, that's when, you know, you're happy to start making profit. But the key, I think, well, I mean, every business is different, but everybody's key really is volume. Like you want to hit sales. Mm-hmm. You want to get customers. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to know that you can acquire customers, keep your CAC low, keep your AOV high, like stuff like that. And then from there you can be like, oh, wow, amazing. Let's, you know, stock our profits and, you know, 
go up from there. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it is. This but is it feels natural. Maybe embarrassing to admit. I've never bought lingerie for anyone. So <laughs> in that scenario, when Hopefully you say this pricing, definitely, yeah. yeah, a lot of that. But when you say this pricing, how does it compare to what's on the market? Is like a Victoria's Secret super cheap? No, I'd say, well, I think lingerie, same? like in general, besides, like we're not thinking like, you know, La Perla or Asian, Asian provocateur. provocateur. I think it's all pretty reasonable and I think lingerie is like attainable affordable luxury so it because it is supposed to be like a luxurious thing yeah. so you know I think our price points are competitive why did you do the LA like made in America thing were you well it was feedback? COVID actually at the time oh, we, so that's when, smart that's actually really smart it was when by we force la- but now by choice yeah, yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when we had launched things were, were all made in China yeah. from our brand and prices were lower we weren't trying to be anything that we're, we are now or that we weren't at the time and when we got notice of, of the Chinese factory closing, like December 2019, we had a couple months to wow. finally figure reach, it out. yeah, to figure it out and find our <laughs> LA manufacturer. Yeah. And we were like, this is so temporary. This is so temporary. And yeah. here we are like four years into this, still spending so much. And on you these. like it, but it's good. We, but we, love, yeah. we, we just love these pieces now. We're like, this is such good quality. How do you downgrade from uh, there? Yeah. And sure. I know everyone is doing feedback. that now <laughs> during, yeah. during this um, yeah. inflation time. As a consumer, I see everything it, like just having downgraded. Yeah. And like costs have gone up, and we're like, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to be part of that. I had a bow tie company once, and uh, mm, it was like my fun. first. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. But that's when I cool. started it, we everyone was like, oh, you guys should do like made in America bow ties because we were making them in China. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we did, and we partnered with the. So Brooks Brothers had this factory in Sunnyside, New York, and so like literally, you go down there's seamstresses. It was amazing. It was like going back into time, and so we partnered with them. And we had this like made in America line at the Brooks Brothers factory. And uh, they were significantly more expensive, obviously. And like, no one bought them. Like, no mm. one really cared. You know, wow. they, they cared via email, but when it came to the purchase, they didn't care. Wow. wow. So when was, like, was this? This was in two, th- oh my goodness, when was this? 2010 to 2014. Oh, interesting. Okay, it wasn't okay. that long ago. Because I was going to say, consumers now. now are like, what's your philanthropic? you know background background what is your you what do you do corp? yeah what what's the sustainability <laughs> aspect of your brand what's this yeah. and that before like gen z is like snobby with like where is it made what's the background what yes, is you I know mean, we can think tiktok are the that. are the um yeah. workers paid and are they in good condition and they're they hopefully they're not in the labor force in like sri lanka yeah like i feel like gen z is maybe a little yeah. Snobbier about as that As long as now. the sweatshop good... is in Los Angeles, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Everything's oh, made somewhere, I know. Let's talk about the marketing side of things. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's our favorite do? part. What are, your, what are your channels? Yes. Where do you see the most growth? Everything. Literally as much as we can. Everything, Everything. everywhere. We were like guerrilla marketing in the beginning yeah. because we're, we're thankfully we had like USC and tons of people around us every day. So much offline marketing. A lot of social clubs. A lot yeah. of, yeah. So much offline marketing that way. Events. Fun. We would sponsor so many gift bags for so many different types of events. We would like generate so many different discount codes and just kind of like, you know, watch. We said yes to everything. We, we did said everything. yes to everything. And we yeah. reached a lot that way. There was, there's so we many did. people and customers mm-hmm. and like, I'd say even friends we've made through that. It was the best thing we could have done for a brand and we're the faces of it. And we were young and people were excited, thankfully. So the Gorilla Offline Marketing did well for us and now it is it's just meta the paid ads we don't do paid ads on tiktok but okay. we do we do have fun why there. not is there and something about the tiktok paid ads that don't i think we just or? haven't we haven't found our our factor in it yet sure. yes. maybe one day maybe we'll we'll hire it's always for that it's or like something. crazy how quickly of course, all this stuff I do, changes you know from kind of market research i've done and people that i've spoken to in the industry that do market on tiktoks TikTok, I think that TikTok shoppers are spending a little bit less than even like yeah. 138 or 110. Right, and they're stuff. also they're, not they're, Their purchases not are a little shopping. bit lower, exactly. Yeah. So if we put our candles on there and you know we spent some money on ads, we could probably see a little bit of a return. Sure. Do you guys do all the content yourself or do you have an agency you work with? Is- a little, bit I mean, we work a little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit no of everything. No agency, though. Okay. We've never worked with agencies. For PR, for marketing, yes. nothing. Our yeah. press is all organic. We just, wow. yeah, we get reached yeah. out so to a lot. We gift a lot. It. We really we did. did. We did. And we organically, we did. Vogue, GQ, Forbes, everything, everything. that we had was, was super unpaid, which we pride ourselves on. And you know why we did that? We wanted to we wanted to track our growth. Like, genuinely, yeah. we wanted to track our growth. You wanted to understand growth. it. Yeah, we wanted to see what the hype was about, what editors really wanted our product, like what they had what to say com- about it. What they had to say about it. Yeah. So we walk wanted the somebody feedback. through it. So if someone's listening and they're like, how did, how did you get into Vogue? 
without an agency, what would, like, how'd you do it? Honestly, create amazing content, mm -hmm. create an amazing okay. product, put it everywhere. Like by put it everywhere, I mean, you say you just go to all events that are on brand for you. You sponsor wear as many stuff. gift bags. <laughs> yeah, wear your stuff. You put promo how codes in all the gift bags. Wear your stuff. It's not. This it's not. not you hustle, you need None of help. This is simple. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's not simple, but it's so rewarding. You definitely like, if you don't have a co-founder, I would say you need an assistant, you need an intern. There's just only yeah, so many hours help. in the day and you're just constantly creating work from like the second you wake up to the second you go to sleep at like you know even on weekends you're like where do I put my brand you walk into a store and you're like that would fit and you have to go find the buyer yeah. or ask you know the store manager to connect you to the buyer and you just keep following up <laughs> so just keep following up it's not Be as annoying as yeah. you feel comfortable but like in a very natural way like hey I would love to send you some product I was you know looking at your page and I noticed that you love so and so and just be genuine about it because people love hearing from other people. I think yeah. a lot of brands even that reach out to us from like a brand page and kind of want to partner with us versus a human being that says, hi, I'm part of so-and-so's brand. Yeah. We respond so much better to humans. So just as humans, we always <laughs> want to make sure that it's my sister and I and anybody sure. on our team that's directly reaching out to people to work with them and to promote the brand versus it saying like, you know, info at beverlyhillslaundry.com sent you an email. Yeah. It doesn't, mm -hmm. yeah, it feels a little bit more robotic and yeah. people want to talk to people at the end of the day. Hopefully. So that's really, Hopefully that's really we're still advice. After, after the AI boom, hopefully people still want to talk to people. I think they do even <laughs> they do. more so do. now. When I had the bow tie company, we had a guy named Max. It was a fake person. It mm. was uh, Max at otie.com was, was the guy. It was and you though. It was me or my co-founder. Mm -hmm. Love it, okay. It was actually three of us. It was one, one of us, it was three, three of us and yeah. the first okay. person to respond, it was like, we'd yeah, do yeah, it on yeah. behalf of Max and yeah. so, Max would like upgrade your order yeah. to two day to overnight shipping. Love Max it. would throw in a free bow tie for oh, you. That's nice. amazing. Max did like, you name it, he did it. it nice. He was like the customer yes. service legend. And then after like three years, we, we decided to like say goodbye to Max. And so we did this thing that he got into the Doctors Without Borders program. <laughs> And so that we're is, running, we're running a max, like max so going creative. away sale yeah. that is so and creative. all the customers just bought. So it was like a buy one, get one, uh -huh. but it was That's a amazing. fun way of like not devaluing the brand of course. and making it about Max's getaway. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's um, really funny. That's for people listening, unique. Max is not real. I don't think I've ever said that on the podcast. I'm sorry if you were a buyer of that product yeah. and this is, <laughs> this is how you find out. But, and so what's interesting is I took that concept. This is before AI was a thing. And I was like, we should start a tech platform where Max is like there's a bunch of Maxes, but it's all computerized. Mm -hmm. like and that's AI. Chat GPT. Yeah. And that's what it is now. And that's what it is. Which is now. cool. And so to your point around like the you know, the name should not be info at like people want to talk to somebody. People want to talk to somebody. You knew that. You yeah. knew that. But, years that ago. but it just makes sense. It's just like hospitality. It's feeling special. The customer wants to feel special. They want mm -hmm. to be spoken to. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. They want to feel seen and heard. Do you guys have like a dream event or you may be working on something this a dream year event. that you're like, okay. We have a so slumber party many dream, dream event. Events. I think that's like the first thing that comes to my mind. A slumber party. A yeah, slumber like party. Beverly Hills Hotel, like super like Beverly Hillsy and iconic, just like, like a launch of like a sleepwear collection or something. Yeah. Slumber party. I think that's like, I could yeah. see that. <laughs> right. Like the sunset tower right by your house. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Too, something iconic. like that. So not, you're, nothing in the works for this year in terms of like. Oh, we do. Oh, events, we no, do. we have a lot of things. I okay. mean, it's Women's Month. We have something at the end of the month. It's called Cosmic Femme, and it's really just like celebrating femininity and when being is it? in touch tell, with I think that. we're going to release this uh, pretty soon. Oh, so awesome. Tell, oh, tell, tell it's people. It's on okay. March 28th, and people can find the details on our Instagram by then, I'm sure. Yes. And it, it should just be a fun, a fun night. It's like in the evening at the Brightly, the social club in West, in Hollywood, West Hollywood. And there will be bowling and like tarot card reading charm bracelet making of we're course selling you can shop us. some panel speakers dj wow. and great networking where's the craziest place you shipped your product oh um good question oh i they're not like crazy <laughs> but no. like i love seeing like greece and new zealand and oh so you, yeah that's yeah. okay i mean I, it's not crazy not yeah. crazy like indiana like i'm always asking founders how do you get to indiana you know it's like oh, oh no we there. get that no, obscure, yeah, we get the obscure places. middle america, middle america. Yeah. you do yeah we do. It's like Beverly Hills. We're selling Beverly exactly. Hills to like Indiana. We're just selling the Indiana. name. <laughs> yeah. Have you hit every state? No, I don't think that. I don't think we have. I'm doing this thing in my head where I can see like the social media post where it's like the most conservative state in America. And then yeah. why? Because they haven't bought our product. 
<laughs> and you guys just call them out and it's like Connecticut or exactly. know, North Dakota know. or something. No, yeah. I could the see Dakotas. Connecticut getting, getting a Beverly Hills lingerie before. They would do it for some sure. Of these. They would. What would you tell like, uh, you know, entrepreneurs today that are maybe going to pre-med that are like listening and they're mm. in school, oh my gosh, they're starting we... their college journey? Oh, wow. I would really say take as many jobs, internships, shadow opportunities, learning opportunities as possible. We, it's like, we didn't start like with no experience. We yeah. have both had jobs in PR, marketing, Everything. other, other kinds of internships. I had like interior design media. internships, like just learning how to mm-hmm. work. Like it's not like it can be your first experience. I mean, for, for some people it works, but that is my advice to learn as much as you can. Like we took these jobs while we were working on Beverly Hills Andre for that yes. year and a half while we knew we were going to launch it soon and just getting all of our tools and resources and just the experience of, of working under a belt. So I'd really say that's smart. Yeah. Just, it really is. Yeah. I was going to get as much experience, do everything. You don't know everything. Don't act like you know everything. And so just be humble. hungry for learning. Yeah. For, be yeah. Humble. for new information. Yes. The world will humble you if you're not humble. There's you a weird thing about entrepreneurship be, where yeah. you have to be like, so kind of stupidly confident to start it. Yeah, well, you, you do. do. But then you're you going to get you massively then, humbled the whole time. You will be humbled the whole time. Like yeah. you will want to <laughs> learn true. A to Z of your business. And we really do tell, cause we speak, we do so many podcasts and we speak to so many people who want our advice. Cause we are genuinely like not gate gatekeepers. We will, we love to help people. We love to tell people how we started and our thoughts and our mistakes and, you know, our favorite decisions and stuff like that. And one of the biggest things we do tell entrepreneurs, our advice from both of us, honestly, is to know A to Z of your business. Mm -hmm. You will be hiring, you will be building a team. There's only so many hours in the day, but being able to know the A to Z of your business is so important. Like you need to know like how to create content, how to run ads, like how to write web copy. Like you really cannot rely on on anyone at any point of time. If someone takes a sick day in your team, like you need to What are you going to do? Like you're an entrepreneur, you started this business. Yeah, you need to have all the contacts saved. Like you need to just, you have to be ready to rock like and roll at all HR, points of the day. And they're just hiring. Yeah, for spots. you can't just delegate. Like you're, that, you're not the you're not yeah. the entrepreneur there. You're that's just what HR. I'm saying. Stay humble. <laughs> you're Stay just humble. delegating your company. You're just delegating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely it's, learn everything. It's a real thing. We were we yeah. were printing and out our labels learn. and yeah. fog and like shipping everything, you know? Like that's yeah. that's stuff everyone needs to know how to do if they, <laughs> no, you if really they do. wanna if it's good advice. You, you should is. know something about everything about yeah. your company. But don't exactly. ask like everything. <laughs> but don't ask. Stay humble. In because contrast. you will be learning so much. Yeah. There will be so many defeating days where you thought you knew how to do something, but you didn't, and you relearn it all over again. And it's totally fine because it works out better than what you thought. I think like that's why I like real estate development because I can't be the architect. Like mm, I can't. Yeah, I you know it. what I mean? Like I totally, can't be the yeah. engineer. And so there's this like, it forces you to delegate. Mm-hmm. Right. And you really can't. It's like the job is to control. get out of their way and just give them high level direction. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's really a trust. But if, it's a trust, it's a trust process. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it is a trust thing. You're hiring someone for their value. You're hiring them because you trust them and you're hiring them because you like their taste. Mm-hmm. And you have to let go, let them do That's their why job. why people go to your stores. And why people shop with you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're trusting you yeah, to create so. an experience in a moment. What are some of the mistakes you, you can share? Mistakes. Um... The silence is not because we haven't made. They mistakes. haven't made a no, single made, mistake. I'm trying to think of something that's not like sappy to say. I think I, get I mean, like, down to yeah. just trusting because we're we're pretty we're discerning, but we're pretty trusting. We mm-hmm. really do see the best in situations and people. We don't want to like go in and presume the worst. But there's been some people who we work with. We could give them like ten products. They would run a whole photo shoot for us, like oh, you know, it's offsite. Not even the worst. I it's think not even the worst. Other, like in the beginning of the business. Yeah, just trusting. Like those, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like not getting the products <laughs> back, for example. And we're like, no, no, we're, we're like, there's like worse than that. Like we're, I know, we're but how like worse? How dark do getting, we want to go? Get a partner with. You. Yeah. Like, are we going to, I can't say too many, like, I know I don't you're thinking names. about, but there's don't something we can't say, yeah, but yeah, no worries. it was just there was like not Turkish getting paid woman. out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Turkish woman. Uh, there was woman. also this brand that we didn't I get, I mean, this reseller, <laughs> you know, didn't, a buying they didn't company pay, went like, bankrupt and 15 of their brands. It was like a Barney's or oh like, my I just heard Matches Fashion hasn't paid their brands in years yeah. and that's why they're, they're closing down, for example. Yeah. Um, but we've, we've gone into those things. I wouldn't say they're mistakes at all i wouldn't say anything is a mistake i think it's all meant to be and it's all learning it's It's all a learning (laughs) experience i personally don't live with regrets like i'm i'm alive and healthy and happy and that's that's all i need so i don't think that like mistakes were negative in any sense like i'm doing this project right now as an example and Mm -hmm. there's this new like very woke culture in los angeles which is interesting all we're trying to do is open up a restaurant and Mm -hmm. that restaurant has like a liquor license it's not a club it's just a restaurant 
right. with a little market, little bodega. Really cool. Cute. You'd think. Love that. And yeah. the council people are telling me like, this isn't for the community. And I'm like, oh who is God. the community? Just so we're clear. Like who, when you speak about the community, who are they? And what she's referring to is basically like the poorest of the people, like the homeless people. Right. right. And I'm like, I don't know if you know how development works, but like, this isn't how it works. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know. They that don't I know how development works. That's why I'm saying. Exactly. In, in, and you can't just right. take Where advice from anyone. But they honestly. want to like shut down our project. Yeah. And it's just like these, it's really interesting where it's like, when I first got into development, it went well, mm-hmm. then COVID hit. And then we had to deal with all that. Of course. We figured that out. And mm-hmm. I was like, that'll be the hardest thing I ever do in my life. I really thought that. And <laughs> then the inflationary <laughs> period happened or is happening, I guess. And yeah, then I was like, it. no, this is the hardest thing. <laughs> yeah. And now like, now it's politics. Now it's like politically That's why the I asked climate. If, you, if all of your real estate and all of your work it's is in, in California. California because yeah. there's a whole political aspect attached uh, to real estate yeah. now here in California. No, it's big time. And I, I thought I was good at it. Um, <laughs> you are, surprise. You I'm are, sure the course. rules and like the it's new changing. things that they spin will always be surprising. I, like, you know, we, we invest in some companies and some of them, uh, like there were so many emergency board meetings, but I think COVID simplified people's business mm. in it the did. sense of like it a did. lot of people like stopped experimenting. Like unnecessary like fluff and fill. It like did. You, totally. couldn't, you couldn't take those. Unnecessary those office space, unnecessary yeah. team members. I mean, yeah. people were working from home and getting more done. A lot of Well, when Essence fired Essence, the multi-brand retailer website, One when of Essence fired like 500 people and they were the same brand, everyone was like, what were those 500, 500 people, people doing? doing? How were there 500 employees that when you fired, yeah, your company was still changed. running the same? Yeah. <laughs> so like, why? Like, why is there all this fat that needs to be trimmed everywhere? There's so yes, COVID yeah. simplified yeah. a lot of things. When I'd I was say. at San Francisco, I went to Google's offices one time. I don't know if you guys have been there, but you go, no. and basically, we park, we walk, and there's like all these people playing volleyball, and like they're outside. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like not working. Yeah. And then and then they're like, and this is where we got our haircut. And like, this is the dry cleaning. Yeah, like, and, then, <laughs> and then like it, it happened. They, they were basically cooking duck. There was duck that day, which is why we were there. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, we're here to get duck. That's and so then hilarious. you have like the chef. Everyone's getting duck. And then we're okay. sitting there with a friend of ours who works at Google. And I'm like, so what do you do here? Like, will you come in? What, when do you come in? He's like, 10. And I was like, all right, you get here at 10. Oh. Cool. It's noon right now. So what have you done? What did what have you, you worked a little breakfast? bit? He's like, Brunch? yeah, no, I worked. I'm going to do this. I go to the pod nap pod after this. And okay. then maybe I'll play like some campus event that they have okay. every day. And I'm like, cool. And then when do you go home? He's like, oh, around like four. Okay. And I'm like, this is a retirement home for yeah, you that's, that's and for camp. dreams. That's what that is. Yeah. 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 It that's was funny. wild to see. Yeah. But these people who are working there, see. they're, they're not going on, you know, to work somewhere else in their careers or do something. From, right. I can't I mean, imagine I think they that. Have hopes With of that doing, culture, I just can't imagine so. that. Yeah. It really inhibits your growth, honestly. Oh, for sure. Totally. But and then I, you also see the culture. Like, I think the culture has been moving that way for a little course. while. Of course. Oh, yeah, because you you become Definitely. complacent and it's totally. normalized. I mean, and then COVID the hits and then you're like, yeah. screw yeah. just Then your drive yeah. goes to zero. In a positive way, we will say that everybody should really, really hustle, especially for what they believe in and for their job and for their career. Let's leave it at that. Whatever you're doing, this is why you're a good balance. Do it so well. You know exactly how she feels, and then you're saying well, you this. Know, it's so know, nice. When Kim K said, "Get your f and ass up and work," yeah, and it caused. Yeah like uproar of negative backlash that. and controversy. But tell me why that is Everyone negative. was so mad at her. I'm yeah. just gonna... <laughs> But why was it negative? It's okay. Like, just pick what you like to do and do it. Oh, you know what I mean? It was negative. And it's just, not like, negative. Supportive. This is why it doesn't, it doesn't, but it wasn't. doesn't work. It what is it negative. like working with your sister? That. Yeah, I That's see what it. it is. This is great. I'm like, oh no, she got so much controversy, so much Which change. Which one She's of like, you? Oh, who's older? Who's the older sister? Can you guess? I Out can't, of curiosity. I can't no, just, try to I guess. Really try to guess. Just do one guess. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to guess based on personality. Okay. And I think, because you, you seem more, you almost seem like the older one. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. You are? You got it, yes. Okay, only, but only because you seem nurturing to her. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. That was You see what I'm saying? Like when you no, were no, like, it's, it's very motherly. Yeah, yeah. like yes. it was like, you've clearly, she's. It's mother-daughter. She, it's a little it's sister. It's a little mother-daughter, sister-sister. There's, we, yeah. It's like interchangeable Yeah, she's five years older. Okay, yes. you didn't have to say that. See, that's, <laughs> see I didn't ask that. Why are you giving away my age? <laughs> little little siblings love to out there. She outed me, but. Yeah. Well, you are the nurturer. That's clear here. Let's go to this. And so when it comes to influencer marketing, is there like Mm -hmm. a dream collab you guys have? Maybe you have something in the works or... I think that changes every day for me, which is so funny. It's like, who is it in the moment that I'm I'm drawn to or into? And like, I'll go through a period of following and unfollowing influencers and 
and models and whatever. But like maybe I, I think like Madison Beer is cute and she like she likes this kind of stuff, this kind of clothing. Yeah, we were talking about so, her yesterday. Yeah. We really For like example. her. Have you guys had a really successful collaboration? Um, a very successful. Or at least where you've seen like something Not you've done has products. been like a, bu a, a bump in either um, views or sales. I mean, there will question. be there will be a certain influencer or model that will sell out the product that they're yeah. wearing. So those are kind of like bumps that we'll see, but nothing so drastic. Like there wasn't like a capsule collection that we did that took us into like Harrods. You know what Do I you mean? mean? Like collab, like if an influencer posted and shared. Weared it. Yeah. Yeah. Posted, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, all of a sudden we'll the sales out. go nuts. Yeah. Yeah. No, we see like, that. Sorry. I, was I would say like the mean. Addison Ray era. Mm -hmm. She, we sent her a bunch of products. She like filmed TikToks on it. She's a she sweetheart. She loved it. She yeah. loves oh, it. So she cool. tagged us in feed. We she didn't ask for anything. We didn't ask for anything. We just, we yeah. liked her. That's we amazing. Sent, wanted to send her product and we, we are very careful with how much product we send out now. I think four or five years ago when we you know a year into the business two years into the business we were just like sending to every fashion blogger that we personally liked and that our team found to be a good fit and you really do need to be so careful because different fashion bloggers and different influencers have a different influence on people and you think just because somebody has such good engagement and such a good reach it doesn't mean people go to their page to shop their clothes they might go to their page to shop their like um, homeware or go to their page to shop their shoes or go to their page to shop their like you know anything candles like so you do have to be very nitpicky now because there's a lot of influencers out there. Love you all. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there influencing. There's a lot of noise, yeah. And there's a lot of noise. And it's different. It's Definitely. funny when you mention the word blogger. It's you know, so different today. It you know? is so different today. Yeah. Because back then, blogger was like they literally had a had a Tumblr and they would blog, or they yeah. had a Pinterest or a website. Or a website. They made on, on for themselves on but we were, we, yeah. yesterday we were talking to, to Carrie from Make, and she was saying like Glossy Glossier mm -hmm. was a blog first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was just like recommending products. Right. And, and look at it now. Launch, and look at it now. Right. It was so strong DTC. And how crazy the freaking is that? mortar is amazing in West yeah. Hollywood. So yeah. crazy. Yeah. So yeah. crazy. But uh, you can, like, once you have your following and a website and, like, loyal cust or not customers, but a loyal following, you can sell them. Yeah, anything. community. Definitely. That's, it's, that's like modern day, like, influencer turned entrepreneur who's right. selling something. Right, right. On Instagram. That's like the blogger turns like something else. So it's, let's it's do this. Let's wrap on this. If someone's listening and they haven't bought lingerie yet, mm -hmm. give them. What are you afraid give of? Them the why. <laughs> um, why are you scared? It's not scary. There's something for everyone, <laughs> and it's not that serious. And you'll find what works for you. You don't have to exactly. like get you a bra will. and panty set. There are other types of lingerie to play with, whether it's like a robe. You know, you can call it that, or just sexy you know sleepwear. Just start with lace PJs. Let's leave it at that. Sure. Lace PJs. Yeah, keep it that classic. Sounds comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep it comfy. I want to thank our model for being <laughs> so good to us today. Where can people find you? Where can they shop? Where can they buy? Where can they yes. support? We're just BeverlyHillsLingerie.com, Beverly Hills Lingerie on Instagram. Shop BHL on TikTok. And Twitter. Thank you guys for coming oh, on the podcast. You. I love thank the name. You. Such a great name. Thank you. So Thanks much for fun having with us. You. Thanks for having us. It was a great time. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.